Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Just so you guys know, we're trying out some new equipment. We got a little light deal going on and uh, a mic. So things might sound a little different, maybe get muffled up while we're doing the technique. But today we're gonna work on a, another back escape. I just did a body triangle escape and going to the overhook side. Today we're gonna look at going to the overhook side, no body triangle, and how I like to deal with um, the seatbelt and the hooks. And on my body triangle video that I just posted, some idiot decided to comment on there saying that you shouldn't watch my techniques, you shouldn't watch my channel, you should go to his channel because he knows so much better uh, because I'll use the wrong hand to fight the legs. Um, the guy didn't watch the whole video apparently because I was talking about the difference for a minute between the primary and secondary hands because I in fact do know what I'm talking about and I actually learned that move from Gordon Ryan himself. So he was the one who was talking to me about the primary and secondary. So just a real quick recap of how, I don't know how many times in this, uh, in all my videos I've talked about this. So moron out there, go ahead and watch this one. So if she has my back, which is exactly what I was talking about. She has a primary hand, a kill hand, a choking arm, an overhook. There's a lot of names for it. This is the dangerous arm. Right? This arm can't choke me. Okay, it's the secondary. This arm's the one that's gonna go around my neck. The secondary will come out and it can wrap up and choke me. So of course, defending both of the arms is a good idea. Like if I keep this arm, she can maybe wrap this arm around my neck, but she's gonna struggle to finish. If I keep this arm, she'll just never wrap my neck, right? The, the way it works is I have a primary and secondary hand as well. My primary defensive hand is always the opposite hand of her primary choking arm. And the experiment you can do with your friends or at home is take the same side as their choking arm, so left against left, and try to hold it. She's gonna spider walk her hand up my shoulder, not this one, primary, up, 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 strong, we do it hard, 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 and no matter how, go, go, all the way, get to a choke. No matter how hard I hold, she's gonna win that fight. So then switch hands, do primary. Do the same thing you just did. Try to walk your hand up and choke me. Zero effort, and I can stop her from getting her choking arm across my neck. I know that, and I've talked about that a lot of times. There are situations when you're doing back escapes and concepts around the back where you can rely on your secondary hand for moments. You can trust that, right? For example, if you go to the side, and I don't have both hands defensively in place, I can rely on my secondary hand for the seconds it will take me to use my primary hand to break hooks out, right? So that's not a problem. You shouldn't rely on the secondary hand consistently throughout the whole process of your motion, and it shouldn't be your primary hand. But you can rely on it for moments at a time while you use your primary hand for other things and vice versa, right? So thank you for your lovely comment moron i don't remember your name i just deleted it because you're stupid and i don't want to get into arguments and like i said learned it from gordon himself so let's get right into the video we're going to talk about escaping to the underhook side in a way that i like to if i go to the uh, or to the overhook side if i go to the underhook side I, I do a series where i win at the level of the head beat the bottom hook win at the level of the hips clear my elbow the problem with trying that can you take my back from the overhook side is when I get to that last step, let's say I'm gonna escape the same way as if it were the underhook side. I go here, I beat the bottom hook, my head's kind of on the mat, I mean her arm's between my head and the mat. I win at the level of the hips, then I try to clear my elbow, her arm's in the way. And unless I play that, that wrist control baseball bat grip here, like we did in the body triangle video, it's gonna be very difficult to escape, right? Now that's with the concept of going to the underhook side where you beat the bottom hook but today we're gonna to look at beating the top hook, okay? After I beat the top hook, honestly, my opponent has some options, and we'll get briefly into that, but not too deep, okay? I'm just gonna show one simple way to beat the top hook, uh, but they can try to follow. Usually I can stop that, though. So she has my back. I'm gonna put defensive hands in place, primary hand in place, secondary hand in place, and maybe she takes me on the underhook side, maybe I take her to the underhook side, and maybe we just ended up there, or overhook side. We go to the overhook side, playing here. I'm gonna trust my secondary hand for the two or three seconds, maybe less, that it's gonna take me to take her top hook out. Be careful, guys. This is the wrong hand to use. 
So I'm playing here. I'm going to trust this for moments. I'm going to go here. I'm going to extend my top leg, pull her top hook out, and step over her bottom hook. As I do that, now I can bring my uh, primary hand back into the fight. If you can't hold on to their primary hand with your secondary hand long enough to do that, you should probably go hit the gym, maybe get a little stronger or something, because that's, that's pretty pathetic if you can't do that for the one or two seconds it takes to clear the top hook. What I'm gonna do is keep my knee and elbow close together, so if she tries to throw that top hook in again, it's gonna be very difficult, right? Now my primary hand is gonna reach towards her primary elbow. I'm gonna pull it down tight, pull it tight to me, okay? This is doing a few things. It's hindering her ability to choke me because I've pulled her hand down into my armpit now and I've pulled her elbow kind of across my chest so it's really hard for her to get a good strangle going. And now that I'm here and I'm pulling on this elbow, it also stops her from building height. It's gonna be very hard for her to build head and hip height here. So I'm keeping that elbow off the mat. Now I'm gonna scoop my hips back into her, kind of flattening her hips to the mat. And this makes it also hard to throw in a, a top hook but it also starts to uh, give me the option to go to my knees. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to my knees here. Now, keeping this elbow is also gonna make it very hard for her to build height. So if she tried to follow me right now and come up on top, it's very difficult. If I let go of the elbow, she can rip her elbow back, build height, and start following, right? So I'm gonna keep this elbow. Now to beat the back control, I have to clear my left elbow between our bodies. So it's hard here, right? She's in the way. What I'm going to do, now that I'm not concerned about the choke, post on the mat, push my head back, sit back to my heels, clear my elbow. Once I clear the elbow, now I can start beating that bottom knee and looking to get into passing sequences. All right? So one more time. <clears throat> Thank you. She has her good back control, her good seat belt, primary arm, secondary arm, primary hand, Secondary hand. Who would have known that I knew that after 20 years of jujitsu? Bitch. So I go to the side here. I'm going to trust my secondary hand for the moments it's going to take me to clear this top hook. Okay. Now I'm stepping over her bottom hook, closing my knee so she can't get this foot out either. I don't want her to be able to pull her knee out. And I'm getting knee to elbow so she can't throw that top hook back in. Now I'm going to reach for that primary elbow, pull it in tight. Scoop back into her. Go to my knees. Now I'm not concerned about the choke, and I've stopped her from being able to follow me. I'm going to post and sit back. I clear my elbow, and now I can look to beat this bottom knee and start passing sequences and good options from there. <clears throat> so we looked at a little while back beating uh, back control by going to the underhook side. We looked a couple videos ago at beating the body triangle and going to the overhook side, playing that baseball back control. Today, we were talking about conventional hooks, going to the overhook side, and how we can beat back control by taking out the top hook, going to our knees, playing more of a wrestling top pressure style game. I really like this option because uh, if I can keep them from building up, I win the battle. If they can follow me, now I have a free hip, I can sit to that hip, play normal uh, like mount knee elbow escapes, or I can roll all the way through and that puts us back on the underhook side, right? Then I can play my conventional underhook side escapes. So I really like this option. It might seem uh, unrealistic, but try it out. I do it very regularly in the gym and it's worked really well for me. I can't remember the last time I got rear choked um, just because it's kind of, in my opinion, too easy to, to beat if you know how to use your primary hand. And every now and then, your secondary hand for a second while you use your primary hand for another job. So go try it out. Let me know how it goes. Uh, if you want to see anything in the future, anything, um, any questions, concerns, throw it down in the comments. Like, subscribe. Again, I'm Andrew. This is Aggie. We're here at Nexus Jiu Jitsu in Folsom, California. It's raining outside. But I like it. So try it out. Let me know how it goes. See you in the next one. Ow. You scratched me. Oh, I'm sorry.